August 23rd, 2021, at the exact moment I saw this moment. Hello, Peter. In the teaser trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home, I was transported back to June 30th, 2004, when a 16-year-old me saw this. Fast forward to December 17th, 2021, and I had at least another two dozen similar experiences flashing back over nearly two decades of Spider-Man cinema, and even further into my 90s childhood of comic books and Saturday morning cartoons. Since the release of Spider-Man No Way Home, much has been said about how the film effectively taps into the nostalgia of its audience. For some, this is meant as a compliment. For others, it's a criticism. Great, it's just some random guy. For me, it's an oversimplification, one that misses a profound storytelling technique that is employed to brilliant effect in Spider-Man No Way Home, and all it took to realize it was reading some Sophocles. Yes, that. Sophocles, the preeminent playwright of ancient Athens, who, along with his contemporaries Aeschylus and Euripides, were the forefathers of drama and the theater as we recognize it today. Of the seven complete plays of Sophocles that have survived the centuries, the most well-known is certainly Oedipus Rex, which tells a masterfully tragic tale of cruel fate, murder, incest, and grief-stricken eye-gouging. What struck me in returning to the iconic play was the recognition that Sophocles was not telling an original story with unique characters he invented. And quite to the contrary, Sophocles was tapping into widely known myths that had been passed down orally for generations. And the first written account of the Oedipus story is found in Homer's Odyssey. So, for at least 300 years prior to Oedipus Rex's debut in the theater of Dionysus, Athenians have been telling and retelling the legends of Oedipus, the tragic king of Thebes, his mother-wife Jocasta, royal brother-in-law Creon, and the blind prophet Tiresias. So, when Sophocles wrote and staged his own version of the Oedipus myth, was he just tapping into the mere nostalgia of his audience? Actually, no. He was deftly employing dramatic irony. Dramatic irony occurs when an audience, whether it be readers, viewers, or listeners, is aware of information that the characters within the story don't know. When used skillfully, dramatic irony is one of the best tools a storyteller has to build tension and invest the audience in the characters and narrative. Just think about any horror movie in which an unknowing character descends ignorantly into the basement, where we know something terrible is hiding in wait. When we know something the characters don't, we can hope for them to learn and grow as people, or in Oedipus and the Basement's case, feel sickening dread for what will happen when the truth is finally revealed. So, when the first Athenian audience saw Oedipus and Tiresias trading accusations of treason against Thebes with the prophet, ultimately declaring that Oedipus was the murderer of not just the previous king, but of his own father, they knew Tiresias was right. From that point, it was just a matter of what tantalizing creative spin Sophocles was going to put on a familiar story. This has been the experience of theater goers witnessing Oedipus Rex for the past 2,500 years. So, I can hurl abuse as well as you, except my words sting with the ring of truth, don't they, Mr. King? Oh, God! The dramatic irony never dies. This excursus into ancient Greece brings us back to the present day. The modern myths we call superheroes have been fixtures of our culture for decades, beginning with the creation of Superman and Batman in the 1930s, to Stan Lee, Steve Ditko, and Jack Kirby's creative explosion of characters in the 1960s and 70s, including Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, the X-Men, and the Avengers, among others. Many of these characters have been manifested in a variety of mediums, from comic books to television shows to tentpole blockbusters. They are embedded in the collective cultural consciousness, to the point that when a new Marvel Cinematic Universe production releases, the vast majority of viewers, whether they consider themselves fans or not, know the fundamentals of the hero's backstory, powers, personality, and supervillain adversaries. 
And as Chuck Jordan further explains, entries in the MCU are rarely just a live-action interpretation of a comic story, and rarely an entirely new story based on familiar characters. Instead, they're more like remixes, taking multiple aspects of existing characters and existing storylines and then recombining and rearranging them to keep giving the audience that flash of recognition before turning it into a flash of discovery. That's some neat trick. In other words, the creators are using dramatic irony, playing on the audience's knowledge and expectations. <laughs> Predictable. Which is exactly what makes the appearances of so many familiar faces in Spider-Man No Way Home so effective. When Alfred Molina's Dr. Octopus emerges from the cloud of smoke, we know more about him than Spider-Man does. Hello, Peter. Hi? Do, we, do I know you? When Willem Dafoe narrows his eyes and a sinister grin creeps across his face, we recognize and dread the Green Goblin taking control of Norman Osborn. Norman's on sabbatical, honey. And when the alternate universe versions of Peter Parker, played by Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, arrive to help Tom Holland's Peter process his grief and anger, we, in many ways, know more about them than they know about themselves. Why do you still hear a voice in my head? Even after she was hurt, she said to me that we did the right thing. She told me that with great power comes, comes great, great responsibility. responsibility. Wait, what? How do you know that? Uncle Ben said it. The day he died. So when the heroes ultimately face off against their cadre of foes in the final act of the film, it's not just nostalgia that makes us cheer at this exhilarating sequence. It's the marvelous use of dramatic irony. Like Sophocles and the ancient Greeks before us, it's the secret that we're all in on together. It's the experience of watching the hero discover what we already knew is true about them. It's the sewing of another stitch in the fabric of our myth-making.